about honorable mentions second teams and first teams but of course we couldn't do this show without the man who has always sat beside me the man who's actually made this list has done amazing research over not just the past weeks but the past months ever since week one in this high school football season mike dewan we got zach Nelly producing today's show but it's going to be a lot of fun of course as you amazing viewers or listeners know football never dies or ends here no. in the region i know we're in basketball and wrestling season but nevertheless it's still football season here in the region we've got a great list with a lot of great names it's going to be fun to really reflect on a lot of these kids seasons all these kids played incredible season no matter if it's honorable mention second team or first team all these kids should be proud of what they've accomplished this past year so we'll do our honorable mention we'll do our second team and then we'll end the show with our first team so while you're watching along right now we hope you can comment maybe some support you have for somebody on one of these teams maybe it's a, a grandson a son of your own or even a daughter we have a girl kicker and one of our list of questions yeah spoiler question is She's is that baller. honorable mention second team or first team nevertheless we love to hear and see your support for all these amazing high school football players over the year because they dedicated basically their lives for the past three months you know for you to go out friday nights and watch them play football right. enough from me about what we're going to do let's do it let's go over uh -huh. our honorable mention for the football season we'll start with the quarterbacks first we got matt Kuntz from hanover central i mean this quarterback was as dual threat as it gets although hanover central didn't get the ending they wanted to matt Kuntz was as one of the best quarterbacks in the area he can throw it he can run it, and he really was a leader out on that field for the Wildcats. Then you got Johnny Sorensen for the Hobart Brickies, another great quarterback, transferred in from another school. So it's always hard coming in as a transfer and kind of getting that offense down to the, the nail. But Johnny Sorensen did a really good job, another dual-threat quarterback did a lot with his arms, but had a couple of games where he really did a lot of work with his leg. We have Holland Harris from Hammond Morton. This was another guy. I was really impressed with. Mm -hmm. I mean, these quarterbacks are so good. It just tells you how loaded these lists are. I mean, you have Colton Fouts of a Calumet Christian, another kid who he was on our um, top 10 in passing yard leaderboard basically throughout the whole season. He had himself a terrific one. And then you got Caleb Klimzak out of Wheeler. This quarterback, he really came out of nowhere. You know, in the beginning of the year, we weren't really talking about them. That was when Wheeler was kind of on that rough stretch. But – when Wheeler went on that winning streak to end the season, it was really Caleb Klimzak who, you know, came out of the shadows and really shined as a quarterback and helped that helped the Wheeler Bearcats, you know, win their first GSSC South title for the first time. I believe it was twenty fifteen was the last yeah, time. It's been a minute. And, you know, first year head coach, you know, Nick Testa was under him. So, you know, two guys really trying to learn the system and Caleb Klimzak who's going to be there another year. Really great to see what he you know, did on the football field against Wheeler. But, Mike, a great list. You have five quarterbacks here who we've talked about, you know, on region football weekly and the kickoff shows throughout the whole year. You know, these were names that really deserve to be on this list, and it just tells you how good these guys are. You know, it's a tough list to make, and the region is filled with a great and amazing quarterback. Yeah, I mean, this whole list, going through this whole honorable mention, the way I kind of our first and second teams are, are kind of sought out, mm -hmm. it's – it's not two quarterbacks at the quarterback position. Mm -hmm. It's one quarterback, you're on first team, you're on second team, or you end up on the honorable mention list. So it's it's very competitive with how we kind of got this formatted out, and that's why we had to list a bunch of these quarterbacks for honorable mention. I mean, a lot of these guys, again, we were talking about every single Friday night, Matt Koontz won the NCC Offensive Player of the Year. Of course, you know about Johnny mm -hmm. Sorensen and how he's kind of a sought-after recruit as we speak. Colin Harris is going to be fantastic next year. Again, only a junior, and he's already getting mm -hmm. D1 looks. Colton Fouts and Caleb Klimzak will also be back next year. So as we kind of list through these names, I mean, you're going to run into some All-State guys that we're going to talk about. It's just such a competitive list and how we kind of have these things, you know, kind of formatted out. It's 
we're doing only 11 on offense or 11 on defense. We're not doing 15 aside. It's it's competitive, and we got a, this is a very talented honorable mm-hmm. mention team is what yeah, we could say. Absolutely. Let's move to the running backs now. Starting it off will be a Mustang from Must- Munster, Daniel Askadon. This guy was one of the best running backs in the area. Definitely was leading in yards, up there in touchdowns, and the way Munster ran the ball and really fit this Mustang wishbone offense perfect, mm-hmm. the way he was able to execute out there. Yeah, Marco Cash out of KV. This was another team who, look, they had their ups and downs, but really caught heat at the end of the season. And Marco Cash played a vital part in that hot success. I mean, you go back to you know the playoff time, they took New Prairie to the overtime. That was a New Prairie team that blew out Hobart in the first round, but you go to the second round of sectionals, you know, KV takes that game overtime. So, right. you know, Marco Castro is a huge part of that offense. You have Amari and Yabra out of Gary Westside. That was, you know, what they call themselves over there, RBU. He was huge for them as well this year. You know, there were so many guys in that running back room that you could talk about, but Amari and Yarbra, he really stood out, not just because of how fast, how quick he was, but the yards per carry. You know, that was really something big for him. He was another guy who really just came out of nowhere in the middle, in the end of the year. And when we looked at those yards per carry, I mean, there were multiple games where it was nine yards per carry, 10 yards, 12 yards per carry, which is just unreal. Mm -hmm. And he had himself a great season. got Jackson Lawson from Griffith, the junior running back, really helped lead Phil Mason's first season into something promising. You know, you go to that Griffith team, they only had one senior on that squad. So for Jackson Lawson, the junior running back, and I had the pl- uh, pleasure of watching Griffith actually play against River Forest, right. you know, Jackson Lawson's a beast. And, you know, one of the things I thought of was this kid's here to stay, and this kid is going to have a bright future with the Griffith Panthers, and I know Phil Mason is going to be excited to have him for another year. And then there's Jaden Ortiz from Wheeler as well. We talk about that passing attack a lot, obviously, with Caleb Klimzak and Bryce Compton. But don't forget about the junior running back, Jaden or Tease. He had a big game actually against Griffith. We had the pleasure of broadcasting that one. A guy who's really quick. He's got a lot of muscle. He's going to run right through you. But Jay and Ortiz was a huge part as well in that Wheeler team that went on that late run and got that division title. But really, another good list of running backs. All these guys. I mean, like, I mean, we've talked about these guys so much throughout the year. You know, right. Askadam, you're obviously very familiar with, with that mm-hmm. Munster system. You know, Yarbrow is somebody who we talked about. Gary Westside was in the top 10 multiple times. You know, I remember when KV was, I believe, number 10 in our rankings for one time. Yeah. You know, you had Griffith, who was really treading up in the right way. And then you have Wheeler. We keep talking about a team that really caught heat at the end, and it was because of their offense. Yeah, uh, this running back room is the most competitive, I think, on this list. When we kind of talk about our second and first team guys, it's tough to find somebody to place over them, but nonetheless, these guys were mm-hmm. fantastic all year. I mean, Askadam's an All-State guy. A lot of these guys had some of the best rushing yard seasons in program history, if not the best. Yeah. Again, some of these guys, again, Marco Cash, we're going to be talking about next year. Jackson mm-hmm. Lawson, Jaden Ortiz. This was a very tough running back room, and even if not for a couple you know, injuries or you know, slow starts, some of the top running backs in the area, some of these guys could have been left off this list. That's how fantastic the running back position is in northwest Indiana, and again, we're looking forward to see some of these names pop up next year. Yeah, let's move over to our pass catchers. We'll go with Isaiah Kish from Calumet Christian to start it off. He was quarterback, made the honorable mention list as well, and Colton Fouts. You have Rocco Bartlemeo. He was huge for Matt Koontz as well. He played a, a pivotal role in that slant position. And, you know, we call it, we covered a Hanover Central game, and he had a lot of huge catches as well. But he's also a great defensive player, right. you know, as well. You play two positions, and that's never easy to do. Hunter Noonan on a boon grove, and you have Mark Rowland throwing to you. You need a big-time <laughs> receiver, and Hunter Noonan was a huge guy for him. Then you have Javon Lawrence, another guy from Kelly McChristian. Very pivotal list right there. And you got Caleb Short from River Forest, and you have Garrett Lewis as well. And it, it is hard for the pass catchers to make these kinds of lists because, you know, quarterbacks aren't, you know, the, the main thing when it comes to high school football, right. Northwest Indiana, the running backs. You mentioned it. All these right. running backs, you know, have had, like, their best seasons ever. So when it comes to the pass catchers, you can tell how good they are making this list because there's not many that can do what they're doing out there. You know, they play a key role in the offense. And, you know, there's not, they're not the only ones that are trying to catch a football. You know, when, a, when it's a running back, they're the only ones carrying the football. Yeah. But when it's coming to these pass catchers, you know, there's two, maybe three other guys fighting to get open and catch right. that football as well. So, you know, for these guys, a stand down or honorable mention. And you can tell because all these receivers had great quarterbacks. 
yeah, we'll, we'll, we're going to mention probably a lot of those quarterbacks mm-hmm. later on this list if we haven't mentioned them already in the honorable mentions. But, yeah, you know, Cash, of course, a byproduct from Colton Fouts and what they do at Kelly Mid Christian. Then Rocco Bartlemeo, of course, Koontz as well. Mm-hmm. He spreads the ball around a little bit. He was kind of that number one guy at Hanover. Hunter Noonan, I mean, he's he's not going to be the last Boone Grove receiver yeah, we're going to no. see on this list. I'm going to spoil that mm-hmm. right now. Javon Lawrence, big play threat for Calumet. He was he was a first team all, all conference for the for the GSSC. Caleb Short again, not the not the only River Forest guy you're going to see on here. There's a lot of again that GSSC especially. There's a lot of kind of two way guys that they, we have to stick them somewhere. Mm-hmm. Whether it's at receiver, DB, you know, wherever they're playing, they're they're making impacts in that conference. And then finally, Garrett Lewis was an All State guy this year. Again, he was kind of that H back role for Chesterton. Really did all the dirty work for them, but he made a bunch of plays this whole year. So yeah, let's move over to the lineman now. We got a lot of guys on yeah, this D- one. D lineman, O lineman, that's the big boys. We'll start with you know Dion Smith, the Ball State commit for Michigan City. We had the, you know, we covered him a little bit against that Lake Central game, right. and then you know I, we've had a couple of other Michigan City games. You know, that guy is a beast. Mm-hmm. Whether he's offensive alignment or defensive alignment, that guy will boat those right through. I do not want to be matched up with him. Roshan McGee out of the Maryville Pirates had a really great season. Roshan McGee was a huge part for them. You have Ben Root out of the Lowell, Hunter Anthony out of Boone Grove. You have Luke Donsbach out of Andrean, Logan Afantis. You have Tanner Young from Valpo. You have Mitch Krolkowski, trying to get all these names right. You have Seth Renfuss, Kayla Parker, and Nate Kalk out of the Crown Point Bulldogs, 6A state runner-ups. But a lot of men on this list as well. You know, you mentioned them not just defensive line, but offensive line as well. And that makes it tricky because there are a lot of, just like kind of receivers, there's a lot of guys playing these positions. You know, yeah. you have five linemen. You have two or three defensive linemen, you know, whatever kind of scheme you like to run on defense. So, you know, it's really hard to stand out in those positions because, you know, obviously you want to win as a team. But in terms of individual stats and making these types of lists, you're you're going for those individual stats. You're going for those tackles for loss or just a regular tackle or a sack or maybe a forced fumble or a fumble recovery. So, you know, these this kind of a list, you know, we talk about, you know, multiple guys in these positions, it really gets this list more elusive because you're really fighting out there with other guys. And like I said, they're all teammates and everything, but to make these individual lists, you have to find a way to stick out. In some yeah, way. it was a lot of film watching over here mm-hmm. a little bit. Kind of kind of had to watch some film, and I got to give credit to the coaches. We, uh, we kind of reached out to all the coaches in the area, and especially we kind of knew who the skill guys were going to be going into yeah. making this list, but the linemen, it, it's tough. There's not stats for – for pancake blocks and mm-hmm. I mean they have it on max preps and all that stuff but coaches barely update it and I want to give a shout out to the coaches that reached back out to us and kind of threw us some names out there to kind of watch film on and again these guys are are some of the best again Deion mm-hmm. Smith of course he's going to Ball State actually as a D lineman but I mean he, he's a solid O lineman as well a lot of these guys offer a lot of course Roshan McGee is a name that sticks out he all state guy last year again he he's, he's tough man and it, he's not going to be the last Maryville D lineman mm-hmm. that's a that's a stacked D line and we'll get kind of more into that as we go Ben Ruda again I was fun watching his film Hunter Anthony another Boone Grove guy that kind of does things both ways Donchbach is solid Afantis was all state for Munster one of three all state guys kind of yeah. led that Munster rushing attack Tanner Young again a name that was thrown out Krolikowski as well a lot of these coaches again looking out for these guys those are people you circle when you go into that week and they kind of give your offensive or defensive coordinator nightmares so again shout out to these big boys and again some of them we'll see next year so yeah absolutely let's move over to the linebackers now Alec Ponce out of Calumet Jackson Smith out of Wheeler you have Sammy Ampliotis out of El Parejo Kyle Friel out of Laporte Julian Ramirez out of Bishop Knoll Chris Gonzalez out of Boone Grove Jalen Arnold out of Morton, and then you have Drew Corral out of Crown Point. And it's another tough list because I'll tell you one thing, Sammy Ampliotis had the pleasure of calling a Valpo game and actually watching them. That's a kid that can fly around the football field, and he mm-hmm. was really one of the best linebackers I was able to watch you know, in the region this year. And so it just tells you how many great athletes and how many great players are on this list. Kyle Friel, he was a huge part for Laporte, although they didn't have the season they wanted to. If there was one consistent piece, one consistent player going out there, giving his all and really putting out, you know, the best football he could, it was Kyle Friel. That guy was crazy all over the field, making great tackles. And he kept Laporte in some games, although they didn't get the win. He did keep them in those games. Chris Gonzalez was another guy out of Boone Grove. You know, we get so caught up in 
the high flying numbers of Mark Rowland in this offense. But don't you know? Let's not forget this defense was also very stifling. I believe in terms of all the teams we cover here in Northwest Indiana, they were tops in terms of tackles for loss, and Chris Gonzalez was a big part of that. And Drew Corral, you know, obviously when you mentioned the Crown Point defense, everybody deserves like a gold medal True. for the way they played Plenty out Crown there. Point guys on yeah, this list, Drew, that's for sure. Drew Corral was a huge part in that Crown Point defense. So and congratulations to all those linebackers. Yeah, I, I like I know a good linebacker when I see one, I'd like to say. It was a lot of, <laughs> it was a lot of fun scouting these guys, and I kind of know what I was looking for kind of playing that position in the past. And, again, these guys are tackle machines. We kind of know some of these names mm-hmm. from last year, see what they did. Alex Ponce is a tackle machine. He had another season over the century tackle marked. And a lot of these guys, again, some of their teammates are on are on a team higher. It's just, you know, th- those guys are fighting for tackles, especially Ampli Otis. We're going to talk about his teammate a little bit later. And then Kyle Friel also. He, he had a nice running mate. And uh, I think R.J. Barnes was uh, mm-hmm. the other Laporte linebacker. So it's, yeah, it, it's, it's, again, very talented position. you got to kind of find guys to, to kind of stuff those those talented running backs you have in the area. And it's it was fun picking these guys out for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Let's move over to defensive backs. Tyne Venicle out of Wheeler. You have Dylan Bowen out of Hanover Central. Nathan, uh, I'm going to mispronounce this already. Ujek Leah. Ujek Leah. <laughs> oh, Please forgive boy. us. I don't know. That's, that's a tough one. That's oh, tough man. One. We're going to need a pronunciation guide uh, next year. <laughs> Kyle Sabowski out of Bishop Knoll. You have Griffin Van Tischlet. And then Jacob Straminski. That's another great list for those defensive backs. Time Venicle, great player. Two way player. He played a receiver and defensive back for Wheeler. Dylan Bowen, the brother of Drake. But I'll tell you one thing. Dylan Bowen has done a great job making a name for himself. A very young player. Go back to the playoffs. He had a game with three interceptions in that game against West Off. Yeah, they actually actually had an interception as well. So he had four interceptions in his last two games he played. He was huge yeah. for that team. And then you have Griffin Van Tischler. I mean, like you said, we're going to keep mentioning Crown Point guys when we see them. And he's another guy who had himself a great year on a great defense. And then Jacob Straminski, another great player on Hanover Central. This was a a Wildcat defense, like we said. You know, we get caught up in the offense, and we'll talk about some of their offensive players in a little bit. But this is still a great defense, and you mentioned Dylan Bowen. But now you have Jacob Straminski. He was pivotal in that game against West Lafayette, although they did not get that win. He really did a good job keeping that offense pretty silent for that first half they were leading. You know, so for Hanover Central, for them to get represented by two defensive backs just tells you how good that room was for them. Yeah, it's a lot of ball hawks here, a lot of interceptions mm. between these guys. And I know Vedical and Bowen are both sophomores. Again, they might find themselves on this list or higher in the next two years. Again, it, it's I think Van Tichel's also a sophomore. Again, mm-hmm. we have a lot of guys. Again, if you're on if you're on one of these talented teams like Vedical's on Wheeler, you know, built Bowen, of course, on Hanover and Titchell's on C P, I yeah. mean, you kinda you guys are all kind of deserved of your flowers and you guys are all fighting to make plays. There's so much talent on those defensive units and that's why we're we're seeing so much of these three teams. So. Yeah. And now let's move to my favorite position and, and of course my opinion is always right. The most important <laughs> position. That's of them true. all. Overlooked. It's a special teams. Overlooked for sure. Can't forget about special teams. Third we got game. P.J. Kusick out of Andrain. You got Owen Burns on a Morton. We mentioned that we have a girl on this list, which is awesome to see. Emmy Doty out of Hanover Central. She had to kick a lot of extra points. Like <laughs> There were a lot of times where Hanover Central scored, and you know she was kicking them right through the upright. She had herself a really good mm-hmm. season. Special teams are always important. I, I feel like we For need sure. to talk about them more. You know, they're always whether it's punting, kicking, you know, even you know, going to go long snapper, maybe. I mean, holders. We got a long snapper yeah, on, you the, on the go list. Long we'll snapper, holders, blockers, whatever you want to call it. Special teams. When you count up the points, it is very important. If it's mixed extra points, if it's mits, missed field goals, or if they're punts that aren't going far. You know, I, we've seen a lot of great punters. You know, over this past year, one of my favorite punters we'll talk about in a little bit just because I had the pleasure of calling his game. Mm-hmm. But, you know, punters are important. Kickers are important. They're very important people. I think we need to stress that out. I agree. The field position is, <laughs> of course, a big thing. And, again, shout out to these three. Again, Cusick is a solid piece for Andre, and he's mm-hmm. kind of starting to pick up traction, I think, in the recruiting game, and he's going to be back for the 59ers next year. Owen Burns, only a freshman for Munster. I believe he broke a program record, I think, consecutive PATs made. Again, these yeah. are all kind of three – Three busy offenses. These these three kickers are all busy this this fall, and of course Emmy Doty. It's fantastic. Again, you don't see many many girl players. Again, no. it's you know the way this game's 
kind of you know it, it, it's just she's definitely in the in the minority in this and she's doing fantastic things and again she had a very busy season for mm-hmm. Hanover but she was as efficient as they come and she definitely deserves her flowers on this list if I gave you 50 extra points how many do you think you'd hit oh boy that's a really what the defense coming what the defense dude, coming at you and everything I, I'm a pretty crappy kicker I'm okay. probably gonna tow everything just just you know tow it and pray okay 50 with the defense coming hopefully I have a good long snapper and you got holder. people watching too it's like yeah. a regular game I, I think I can get 15 I'll say 15, 15 out of 50 I think, I, think I can get lucky 15 times and I'm towing it every single time I, I don't know so I, I'm gonna go 25 for me oh there you go I I, mean, I played soccer a little bit growing up but you know I, I think that I could get 25 in there I think that anything below the waist I don't really have much coordination <laughs> it, it's pretty much all, all up here I'd I think say. I could at least now I so. could pull out some old soccer shoes and put them there on I go. think I honestly when I watch kickers honestly I do watch that what kind of shoes are wearing. hey I'll tell you this not as much as these three that's all I could say these three kickers oh absolutely. shout out to them and again, as you mentioned, it's a third of the game, and, and they did their part this fall. Yeah, and it's a, and a, it's a part of the game that always it's is. Overlooked. Yeah, it's overlooked. It gets hidden, but, you know, when it's obviously needed the most, you care about it the most, but it's a position that is so huge for a team's success. Now right. let's go to all-purpose team. Now, this is kind of a list where these guys played probably multiple positions. You know, maybe they did something on offense and defense. Or we just, they really deserve to be on this list. It's just like there are so many great players. And we'll start with Deshaun Woods out of Hammond Central. Deshaun Woods was, I mean, he had probably the best start of the year we've ever seen from anybody. Uh, He was running the ball all over the place. And he was doing everything on defense as well. He had a couple of interceptions, including a pick six. He was huge for Hammond Central. And Micah Jones out of Andrean, he's another big guy. You know, for those 59ers, Jeremiah Standstill out of River Forest. I watched him against that River Forest and Griffith game. He was really huge, you know, in that game for them. You had Jaden Hart out of Michigan City, a Syracuse commit. We watched him against Lake Central, and, of course, that he's been followed very heavily just because of how good of a running back he is. He also can be a returner here and there, but mostly seen in the backfield as a running back, and he was – you know, as good as it gets, you know, like you keep saying, this is a running back room in the whole region. Mm-hmm. It's tough to compete, you know, and, and especially a guy like Jaden Hart, who's got a D1 commit offer. You, that's how you know how good of a player he is, because there are so many great running backs in this area yeah. that you have to try and outperform to make yourself stick out. And that's what Jaden Hart has done in his career. I mean, he's done a good job really making his presence known and making an impact for those Michigan City Wolves. But that is the all-purpose team. Yeah, it's again, these are guys that we kind of had to throw on there. It's it's competitive all around. And again, these are guys that could that could really give you nightmares one way or another, whether that's with their defensive play and or offensive play. Again, Jaden Hart's kind of a guy, of course, the name that sticks out, I mm-hmm. believe, on this list. Of course, Syracuse commit. You know, going into the year, seeing as probably, I mean, one of the biggest playmakers, and it was kind of a not not Jaden Hart like year at one point, but he really kind of turned it up. At the kinda, about kinda, six game mark, yeah, middle of the changed. season again, he kind of started getting back into form. And again, yeah. he, he can catch passes a lot. He, again, with that Michigan City spread offense, he was mm-hmm. definitely a big threat in the pass game as much as he is in the run game. And yeah, all of these guys. I mean, again, some of them they'll be back again. It's yeah. I'm I'm excited to see where these guys grow from here. So now we're moving on, man. Mm-hmm. That's let's, it for honorable mention. Yeah, let's take a break on our RSN All Area Football Show, and when we come back, we'll go over the second team. So stay tuned as you're watching us on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. <laughs> 